Uh, first thing, uh, I want to discuss the scenarios. Sometimes what happens is that you will be given some blood reports uh, in, the, in the questions. And what they want us to do is uh, explain the blood reports to the patients. So, you know, anytime if you get a scenario on explaining the blood reports, I've seen a lot of people, they just uh, start explaining the blood reports uh, straight away. You know, but that's not a good idea. What I would say, take a bit of history first so that you get a better understanding about the situation of the patient, right? So patient has got some blood test. Uh, why? Why patient went for those blood tests? What is the patient understanding about those blood tests? And depending on the report, you will take history of the patient as well. And then you will see in the end, uh, you will be in a much better position to explain things to your patient, right? So for example, if I say patient has come for um, a discussion of the blood reports, right? So let me show you the blood reports. Blood reports says AST is high. Uh, you will see the normal values will be given to you. So that's a normal value, but it's high. ALT is high as well. So both the liver uh, enzymes, AST, ALT, both are high. ALP, ALP is usually the marker for obstruction, right? So it's normal. And bilirubin is high as well. So with this much of information, what we understand? What do we understand with this much of information? AST is high, ALT is high, ALP is okay, bilirubin is high. So it, it actually tells us that uh, it is uh, hepatitis, right? Now we have to take history, obviously. So you have to take history to find out what kind of hepatitis it is because we have got uh, so many different, different hepatitis, isn't it? We can have hepatitis A, we can have hepatitis B, hepatitis C. It could be alcoholic hepatitis, could be non-alcoholic hepatitis, drug-induced hepatitis. So you have to take history, isn't it? And obviously, like patient has... Uh, get these tests done because they have got some symptoms, obviously, right? So what we need to start with, we need to start with the symptoms. Which symptoms you had? Why actually you went for these blood tests? So sometimes you'll see patient is saying, I was having some uh, indigestion, I was having some retching. Uh, and that's the reason. Sometimes patient will say, I've got uh, tummy pain as well. So many symptoms a patient can have. So hepatitis, usually the symptoms patient might have is uh, uh, muscle or joint pain. You have to ask for fever as well. Nausea, vomiting, that's quite common. And obviously anything happening in your liver, any inflammation of the liver, you will definitely be feeling tired. You don't feel like eating. Anorexia, loss of appetite will be there. Abdominal pain. And if you're looking for obstructive hepatitis, uh, if there is any obstruction, so usually you will see dark urine and pale stool as well, right? Itchiness, jaundice, yellow discoloration of the skin, eyes, that is something that you need to ask. Now, why we are asking all these symptoms? Should I ask all the symptoms? I would say yes, ask all the symptoms. Why? Because in the end, you are going to do symptomatic treatment as well, right? So that, that is really important. Now, patient is going to ask you, patient is definitely going to ask you why I'm having this problem. Right. So what you need to do is you need to ask questions so that you are able to tell something to the patient. For example, if you're thinking it is hepatitis A, so it's, you know, like it spreads uh, with fecal root. So you need to ask if there is a history of eating out. If there is a history of eating out, then you might be going in the direction of hepatitis A, isn't it? And for example, now hepatitis B, how it spreads. So you need to go for, uh, like, say, um, history of uh, sexual history, you have to take drug history as well, right? So sexual history, multiple sexual partners, patient is uh, uh, not doing safe sex, so unprotected sex, that is really important. Homosexuals more prone to get hepatitis uh, B. Why we have mentioned about healthcare workers? Because we do, uh, I mean, deal with the needles, isn't it? So you can uh, make sure you ask the profession of the patient as well, right? So this is really, really important, yeah? So uh, travel history and tattoo piercing. So you are using the needle there as well right so these are the questions that you definitely definitely need to ask if anything is positive then you might be thinking in the direction of hepatitis b as well right uh, alcohol obviously you can ask that in the lifestyle if patient is drinking alcohol and if yes it's going towards alcoholic hepatitis right so obviously we need to ask uh, about the underlying condition as well, if there is any diabetes, high blood pressure, cholesterol, that is really, really important, right? So uh, if it is non-alcoholic uh, hepatitis, NASH, that is very, very important reason of cirrhosis of liver in the UK.
All right. Another thing is obviously you need to ask for the drugs as well. So if the patient is taking any particular drug that may cause a, a problem with the liver, right? So drug induced hepatitis, right? So what you have to do, take proper history and see what comes positive. And accordingly, you will be able to make your diagnosis, right? So we already have a lot of blood tests, if you see. And according to the history, you may have to do further investigations as well. You may have to go for serology. Like if you're thinking it's a uh, uh, hepatitis A, so you may have to go for IgM, IgG uh, for hepatitis A, isn't it? And ultrasound scan of the liver would be really, really helpful, right? And then accordingly, you will treat the patient, right? You accordingly will treat the patient. I mean, uh, for example, if it is uh, hepatitis A, what can you do? Most of the time in hepatitis, you cannot do much. It is uh, symptomatic. You just have to give time and patient's gonna be better on its own. Uh, many times what happens is you might be uh, given some findings like uh, IgM for uh, hepatitis A. It is positive. So what is it? It's hepatitis A infection, isn't it? So the, what's the treatment? Treatment is symptomatic. You need to see what exactly the symptoms patient has got. For example, if there is uh, itching, you have to give something for itching. Patient has got pain, give something for pain. But you know you have to be very extra careful before you give any medication to these patients, right? Because abdominal pain, okay, I want to give paracetamol. But you have to be very, very careful before you say any, any, any medication. Why? Because all the medication, they're going to go through liver only. So be very careful. So try not to give medications in the first place. Tell the patient to be staying in a, like say, a cool environment. We are comfortable loose clothes and all. So this is really, really important to manage pain, manage itching as well. Tell the patient not to eat any like fast food and just very soft food. They have to eat the food which is not creamy, not salty, not, uh, I mean, very much sweet, so not fried, obviously. So that is something that you need to mention to these patients, right? So that will be your hepatitis. Again, you may get another kind of stations as well. So let me show you another one. So if the task says uh, patient bilirubin is okay, ALT is normal and AST is raised, what is going to happen? So AST is raised, ALT is normal, what it could be, right? Again, the thing is you need to start taking history and history is almost the same, the one we have just discussed, right? AST is high, only AST is high. To be honest, it's going to go in the direction of alcoholic hepatitis. Obviously, the presenting complaint again could be retching. And what else we can ask, obviously, all the symptoms for hepatitis, you can ask nausea, vomiting, tummy pain, fever, a yellow discoloration of the skin, of the eyes, any urine color change, dark urine, pale stool, all these things you're going to ask here as well. Right, any station that you get, I know you got the diagnosis as alcoholic hepatitis, but make sure you're still ruling out some red flags, right? Just to make sure examiner is happy with us, right? So make sure you're ruling out some red flags as well. Right, so cancer, hepatitis B something, uh, cirrhosis like bleeding and all that you can ask. So that will be your red flag and will be your important differentials as well. Past medical history, what I need to ask, alcohol definitely. I'll be asking for the drugs as well if there's any drug. Family history could be very important. Diet, may, maybe like you'll see patient is uh, eating too much of spicy or fried food. So that could be very, very important. Smoking history is going to be important as well. Obviously, you can ask about the patient's work, uh, home environment, because maybe patient is working in a environment where they tend to drink more alcohol, they might be working in a wine bar or so. So these things are really, really important, right? So general physical examination, vitals, abdominal examination we will be doing. And it depends like what exactly the patient symptoms are. If they, they, are, they have got any other symptom, you can do the examination accordingly. Full blood count, liver function test, GGT is going to be the good marker for your alcoholic hepatitis. So please, please do not miss uh, GGT. All right. Coagulation profile, definitely if you're looking for uh, cirrhosis and all, that is definitely you can do. Uh, ultrasound, as I said, and uh, CT biopsy, I think that's going to be too much. You know, you may not be doing it in the beginning itself. How you are going to treat this patient? Again, uh, see the treatment for this patient is again going to be symptomatic 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 that is the thing right obviously patient has got retching any nausea vomiting we can give antiemetics and lifestyle advice is really really important you have to do the counseling for alcohol 
we can refer the patient to alcohol anonymous group aa group medical management that you can mention right sometimes we give steroids as well for the management and if the case is advanced you may not be able to manage you may have to consider liver transplant as well uh, as well but i would say it's, it's too much you may not be going that much right so you have to see how severe the patient's uh, uh, symptoms are. If the patient is okay, not that badly hurt, and if you see the AST, LT, uh, AST is not that high as well. So you may be going for a routine blood test, uh, of course, liver function test, of course, GGT and coagulation profile, and definitely ultrasound. So these are the investigations that you can verbalize, right? Definitely do not finish your station without mentioning follow-up and warning sign or safety netting. If you really want to get high score in the management, please, please make sure follow-up and warning sign. It is a must. It is a must. It is a must. Right. So you understood what you have to do in data gathering, what you have to do in the management and what are the things you need to consider for IPS. See, ICE, please do not underestimate ICE. I always say ICE is your best test friend. Idea, concern, expectation. Right. Give the information in small, small chunks and keep, keep, keep checking the understanding of the patient, whether they have understood it or not. Summarize, yes, in the later part of the station, when you give your diagnosis, you can summarize it as well so that you are justifying your diagnosis. The most important thing is acknowledgement. Acknowledge, acknowledge, and more acknowledgement, right? And body language, you have to show it to the patient. I'm here for you. I'm here to help you. So your body language is really, really important, right? So be active. When you sit in the cubicle, the way you are doing the station, the consultation, the way you are talking is really important, right? Signposting is very important when you're jumping from one part of the station to other part, make sure you signpost it. You tell the patient that I'm going to ask these questions. So patient is going to expect, okay, these questions are going to come. Otherwise, your patient might feel very awkward. So be careful on that. Active listening, they love talking, make sure you listen to them. In the end, if you're struggling with time, you can always offer leaflets as well. All right. A lot of concerns the patient might be asking you, uh, like, uh, for example, why did I get this? Is it serious? I think you can always, always answer this question. Try not to go with the answer like yes or no. Try not to give like one word or one line answer. Couple of lines you need to say, right? Please involve the patient in the conversation, in the management specifically. All right. So what is alcoholic hepatitis? It's the inflammation of the liver that is usually caused by alcohol very simplified way you can explain it to your patient all right now have a look at this as well what do you think what is happening here so if i say ast is normal alt is normal alp is normal gg is normal as well uh, albumin normal but here if you see direct bilirubin is okay but indirect bilirubin is elevated what does it mean what does it mean? Indirect bilirubin is elevated. So what we will go with, uh, most probably, yes, you're right. It could be hemolytic anemia and uh, maybe we are looking for Gilbert as well. Maybe we are looking for Gilbert. Is it something to worry if patient has got Gilbert? Nothing really, nothing really. Okay, so uh, the symptoms. So, uh, most of the time you will see patient may not have any symptom at all. Patient might have went for, uh, patient might have gone for a routine checkup. And when we did it, you might have uh, found uh, some problem like the indirect blue ribbon is high. Otherwise, your patient may not have any symptom at all, right? Otherwise, jaundice, maybe mild jaundice. And again, you can ask for all the symptoms as well, like nausea, vomiting, tummy pain, loss of appetite, fever, any change in the color of urine, like dark urine or a pale stool. You can ask those things as well. All right. Hemolytic anemia, that is definitely uh, one of the reasons here. So you can ask for tiredness, obviously dizziness, shortness of breath, hepatitis, again, those questions, abdominal pain and all those things. Cirrhosis, bleeding, that is something you can ask. Why a person get Gilbert? I mean, they might have a family history of it, but why it becomes a bit more prominent in the patient? You know, sometimes in the Gilbert patient, you'll see their eyes are actually a bit yellowish, right? But why it get worse? Why it becomes a bit more visible? There might be some risk factor that you might see. If patient is dehydrated, if they are doing fasting, they are doing too much of physical exertion, lack of sleep, drinking alcohol, sometimes diet related as well. So these are the things actually can exacerbate the symptoms of Gilbert. Again, it's not something to worry, but you will see patient will look a bit yellowish. And that is the reason patient might have underwent these blood tests as well. And you will be able to find out this is Gilbert.
All right. And obviously anything you can ask for psychosocial history as well. That is going to be really, really important. And general physical examination, vitals, you can do uh, abdominal examination as well, full blood count, uh, liver function test. And you, what you will get is indirect bilirubin is going to be high. Uh, right. Reticulocytes for hemolytic anemia. That is something that you can check as well. What is the treatment? I mean, when there is nothing wrong, so what treatment? There is no treatment at all. All right. So you don't need to do any treatment here. It's just the reassurance of the patient. But definitely why the patient has got more of these symptoms that is uh, becoming more evident. So maybe dehydration, maybe fasting, maybe physical exertion. So you need to tell the patient to work on these things. Uh, sleep well, not too much of physical exertion, avoid stress and avoid dehydration. Right. So all these things you have to mention it to your patient. Again, I know Gilbert, nothing much to worry, but make sure you rule out red flags and make sure you come up with your follow up and warning signs as well. If you really want to score high in your exam. All right. And again, you look after your IPS as well. Your eyes, check and check, summarization, acknowledgement, good body language, signposting, active listening, always offer leaflets and address the patient's concern. Many times you will see patient will ask you the concern in the beginning itself. Uh, you may not be able to answer, but please acknowledge, I can see you have got this concern. I'll get back to you before I end this consultation. And in the later part of the consultation, make sure you address it. All right. Thank you.